Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team with an overview of the UHD-IPC230-CS HDMI extension kit. This product was engineered to make it really easy for you to share any HDMI media content with a second remote location up to 70 meters away over a single CAT6, CAT6A, or CAT7 LAN cable. The product fully supports 4K ultra high definition media content, including HDR, and provides for local loopback functionality here at the primary site, which will allow you to enjoy the content here while you're simultaneously broadcasting it to your remote location. Also included is audio extraction capabilities that will actually strip the audio stream from the content you're sending to the remote location and allow you to pass that along to a soundbar for better quality audio. Also included in the kit is a set of infrared blasters that will collect the remote control signals from that remote location and pass those back over the same LAN cable to the primary location to be rebroadcast so you can control the content you're watching. Finally, you can actually cascade multiple receivers off of a single transmitter to allow you to distribute that content to other locations. Now, as part of this overview, I always like to start with an unboxing of a product just to show you all the components that are included, and then I'll actually take a closer look at both of the modules and explain the connections and indicators. I'll list the features and functions the product provides, and then finally, I'll come back and actually demonstrate here how easy this product will be to use with your own equipment at home. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you first open up the box, you'll find the transmitter module and the receiver module, two power supplies. These are 5 volt, 2 amp DC power supplies. This end plugs into any standard wall outlet. The other end has a barrel connection on it, which plugs into the back of the modules, and that's all the power you'll need to operate them. You'll also find two infrared blaster modules, a receiver and a transmitter, and it's important you match those up with the transmitter and the receiver for proper operation. You'll also find a full instruction manual that explains connection diagrams, uh, specifications, and other information you'll need to understand about the product to use it correctly. Now, if you stay tuned, next I'll take a closer look at the modules, list the specifications, and then come back and do the demonstration. Inside the kit, you'll find a transmitter module and a receiver module. Both of these feature full metal enclosures, which make them incredibly durable and help to minimize outside interference from causing any issues with the electronics inside. I'll start with the transmitter module. On the top of the unit and the side of the unit, you'll find heat fins that are actually built into the actual surface, and those are designed to keep the electronics inside at a very comfortable temperature. They help to dissipate any heat that's generated during operation. On the side, you'll also notice mounting holes that can be used with the included bracketing kit to mount this module up off the ground and out of the way. On the one end, you'll find a reset button on the left. That can be used to reset the module if needed. You'll hold that in for a couple of seconds. It'll go through power on self-test, then come back online. Next to that is a LAN connection. That's one end of the cable you'll connect between the transmitter and receiver. Again, that should be a CAT6, CAT6A, or CAT7 cable. To the right of that is a power indicator. The minute power is applied to the module, it starts an internal power on self-test, and when it passes that test, it'll light that LED letting you know the unit's ready to use. On the other end, starting on the left, you'll find a DC power port. That's used with the included power supply. You'll plug one end into the wall, the barrel connector gets plugged in there, and that's all the power you'll need to operate the product. To the right of that are two HDMI ports. HDMI out and HDMI in. The HDMI input port is connected to whatever media device you'd like to share the content from with the remote location. The output port is used with the local loopback functionality. Whatever content you're sending to that remote location can still be viewed here at the primary site by simply connecting an HDMI cable between here and a local monitor, and that way you can enjoy the content while you're sending it to the remote location. To the right of that are two infrared ports, infrared in and infrared out. On the transmitter side, you'll want to use the one that is labeled transmitter and plug it into the infrared out. And that's all you need to know about the transmitter module. Now the receiver module is fairly similar. On the one end, you'll find a reset button. And again, that can be used to reset the module if needed. Next to that, you have an audio selection switch where you can use SPDIF or ARC. ARC is an HDMI function. SPDIF is digital audio. And you can make the selection by sliding that left and right. Next to that is the LAN connection. Again, this is the other end of the LAN cable from the transmitter. To the right of that is a power indicator. Again, this will go through power on self-test once power has been added, and that light will come on letting you know it's ready to use. On the other end, you'll find a DC power input port. Again, you can use a power supply that's included, plug it in there, unit will go through the power on self-test and you're ready to go. The next to that is a CAT6 out port. Now, this receiver can actually daisy chain or cascade other receivers off of it. So once you make this connection back to the transmitter from this receiver, you can connect another CAT6, CAT6A, or CAT7 cable from here to another transmitter to actually send the same content to another location, and you can daisy chain up to 10 of those using a, a standard LAN cable between them. SP diff connection here for optical audio, and then finally HDMI out. 
This is used to connect an HDMI cable at this remote location to a local monitor so you can enjoy that content. There are two more infrared blaster ports right here. On the receiver end, you're going to plug the receiver blaster kit into the infrared end, and that will pick up the remote control signals from this location and send those back to the primary location to be rebroadcast so you can actually control the content you're watching. The O-Ray UHD-IPC230-CS is compatible with most modern HDMI media sources, including DVD players, game consoles, computer systems, streaming devices, and media players. The product's features include full support of 4K ultra high definition media content. You can extend that remote location up to 70 meters. It is both HDMI 2.0 and HDCP 2.2 compliant. The transmitter can support up to 10 remote receivers and the product features local loopback as well as IR pass-through capabilities. Now I'll show you the connections you'll need to make to use this HDMI extension kit with your own equipment. And for this demonstration, over here I've set up a small media player that's currently looping a video on this monitor, and that's the content I'd like to share with my remote location. This represents the primary site where I'm currently enjoying the content. Over here, I've set up a second monitor that represents my remote location where I'd like to enjoy that content, and this can be up to 70 meters away from the primary site. In front of me, I have the transmitter module here and the receiver module here. Now, the first connection I'll make is to the transmitter module, and I'll start by disconnecting my media source from the monitor. It's a standard HDMI connection, and I'll plug that into the HDMI input port in the transmitter. And now I'll connect up the receiver. I've got a second HDMI cable connected to this monitor, which I'll plug into the HDMI output port on the receiver module. And now I need the LAN connection between the two. And again, up to 70 meters apart, it's a standard CAT6, CAT6A, or CAT7 cable. I have a CAT6 cable here, and I'll connect that up to the transmitter and to the receiver. Now all we're missing at this point is power, and I always like to wait till the end to connect power up once I've got all the cables securely connected. I've plugged the power supply in on the transmitter side. The other end of that cable has got a barrel connection on it, which plugs into the DC input port, and the same on the receiver side. And I'll plug that into the DC input port there. Now, the minute I add power to these two modules, they start an internal power on self-test where they're checking all the electronics. On the transmitter side, it's also checking the resolution of the media source to make whatever adjustments are needed to send the best possible media stream out to the remote location. The receiver is checking the resolution of the monitor so it can let the transmitter know how high a resolution the monitor can display. It's also handshaking between the two products over this particular CAT cable. It takes a couple of seconds for it to finish that, that synchronization. And there you go. There's the uh, actual display of that media content downstream. It does take a couple of seconds, but you have to remember this is a product that can support full 4K, ultra high definition resolution content. So it wants to make an adjustment to give you the best possible picture downstream. Now, one advantage of this particular product is the local loopback functionality, which allows you to continue to enjoy the content here that you're simultaneously broadcasting to a remote location. And to do that, you'll need another HDMI cable and you'll connect that up to the HDMI output port on the transmitter right here on the back and the other end of that cable back to the monitor you were using initially. Now it's going to take a second or two again for it to adjust because it's checking the resolution of this monitor on the transmitter side. It brings up the picture here and in a second it'll make the adjustment downstream and bring the picture up down here. And that's really nice because you can still enjoy the content here while you're sending it to the remote location which is a major benefit of this particular product. And it really is just that simple to get it working. I hope you found this overview of the UHD-IPC230-CS HDMI extension kit helpful. It really does provide a very easy way of sharing all of your HDMI media content with a second remote location up to 70 meters away over a single CAT6, CAT6A, or CAT7 LAN cable. And the fact that it fully supports 4K ultra high definition media content, including HDR, means you're going to get high resolution content at that remote location. The inclusion of the audio extraction capabilities allows you to strip the audio from that media stream you're sending out and pass that along to a soundbar for better quality audio. The local loopback functionality allows you to still enjoy the content here at the primary site while you're transmitting it to the remote site. The infrared blaster kits allow you to completely control what you're watching at that remote site. And the fact that you can cascade multiple receivers off a single transmitter means you can expand this to support more locations. Everything you need to get started is included with the kit. And with a few simple connections, you can be up and running in no time. So until next time, thanks for watching.